Hey guys, it's Rod with Civil Advantage Firearms Training. Thanks for joining me again for kind of a strange video. The question that we're asking and that we're going to answer today is, what is the ballistic protection offered by a shipping container, also known as a sea can? Um, kind of a weird question. You know, I saw this episode of Doomsday Preppers on, I think it was History Channel, and uh, these folks had loaded a shipping container with all their stuff, and they had it dropped off somewhere uh, on some land, and that was their sort of plan B, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, location. And one of the running um, uh, aspects of the show was, you know, towards the end, they're going to find out if the shipping container will stop a bullet. Well, they used a 22. And if you live in, in reality, uh, you'll know that that's not saying much. And by the way, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil it for you. Yeah, the shipping container stopped a 22. Yeah, big deal. So for somebody like me that comes into contact with firearms a lot, it was kind of a curious question. What kind of ammunition uh, or what kind of bullets, projectiles would a shipping container stop? So I thought I'd make a video about it. I couldn't find any videos or any information really that satisfied me on the internet. So here it is. How did I do it? I went to a business in Abbotsford, British Columbia that specializes in selling and renting and altering these shipping containers. And they were nice enough to provide me with a couple of pieces of the sidewall, which is the same as the back wall of the shipping container, uh, and also give me a tour around and explain how they're constructed and whatnot. And so I'm gonna give you the quick rundown and then we're going to shoot uh, the sides of the shipping container, the pieces of it. Now, bear in mind, I didn't get a shipping container that I could shoot, and I didn't want to shoot anybody else's shipping container either. So there's some, there's some data loss here, but we're talking about the broad side and the back walls of the, of the thing. Uh, so how they're constructed is kind of interesting. So there's this corrugated looking material, and, and people may or may not know, they might think that, oh, it looks kind of like steel cardboard, and they might think that there's more than one layer of steel per side, but there isn't. It's just one corrugated looking layer of steel. And that steel is uh, 14 gauge high strength, low alloy steel. Now, if you're not a metal metallurgist or work in a metal shop, that probably means nothing to you. Uh, but anyway, it's relatively tough stuff. And of course, if you're standing behind one of these shipping containers, you got two layers of that. The strongest parts of these containers are the, are the corners. Basically, two of the corners are pillars, and those are uh, seven gauge, high strength, low alloy steel, which is significantly thicker, uh, a lot thicker. So I didn't get to shoot those, but anyway. And then you have the front corners, and the front corners are where the hinges are to the doors, and that's kind of a folded, very thick steel as well. So, you know, without any testing of those uh, corners, obviously I couldn't do that, but without any, you know, in lieu of any of that, that testing, those corners are pretty thick. Um, and I think you'll be able to get an idea of how bullet resistant they are based on how bullet resistant the uh, sidewalls were. So the other thing is the bottom of these things. The bottom of these things are made of steel girders and there's a lot of protection down there. Um, I'm not going to make a guess at what would be stopped, but there's a lot of steel down there. So anyways, having said that, we've got the skin of the uh, shipping container. We're going to test that and uh, we'll come back and uh, give you our conclusion. So check it out. So we started out with the 22 long rifle. Where's that? That's this guy. Didn't even go through one layer. Um, then we, and that was high velocity nonetheless. And then what's this thing? That's Pol the nine mil. No, that's a poly case. Yeah. So the poly case round went through one, one layer, but didn't make it through the next. Uh, the nine mil hollow point didn't even make it through one layer of the steel. So. It's not even, it, it, nine mil hollow point has lower penetration than even that polymer bullet, the poly case thing. Nine, nine mil full metal jacket went right through and dented the other side. Then we have, on the other side, we have 223 regular civilian full metal jacket. And that, do I have this right? That, is that's this lined, a, yeah, lined up properly? Yes, yeah, that is correct. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. All right. 
we got the, that's the fragment. Um, oh, frangible. That's the frangible, hollow point, and civilian. Okay, so the frangible went right through both sides, and it made actually quite a nasty hole on the, on the, on the second layer, and actually bashed its way through, <laughs> just from sheer force, I guess. And then we've got 223 hollow point that was right through there, and it made about the same type of, uh, of hole that the 223 uh, civilian, the 223 Remington made. So that's kind of interesting because hollow point is going to have better advantages if you're shooting something made of soft tissue. Let's say we're in, a, in, in the United States or something, you're using it for defense. Um, so it, it still has penetration uh, capability, but the 223 whizzed right through and you kind of lose some of the, the advantages that you would with a hollow point. Then the shotgun, the slug went through one layer, but didn't make it through the second layer. So in that case, a shipping container is cover if someone's coming after you with a shotgun. God forbid. And the buck didn't even make it through at all. Whatsoever. Kind of interesting experiment. Well, guys, hopefully that was interesting. I've put up all the information on what type of projectiles were stopped by the shipping container. There's a couple of surprises there, but anyway, Hopefully this was entertaining. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can at CivilAdvantage1 or find us on the net at www.civiladvantage.com. Thanks. We'll see you next time.